another very small update because I'm still in the middle of packing up. Haven't had much chance to do anything on the cars. Poor old Austin there is still unregistered. Um, I'll have to get to that once we actually move. And I'm slowly packing things up. The Riley's all taken apart. Uh, the mill is all unbolted. Um, it's not actually hanging from that chain yet. It's still resting on the top of the pillar there. Um, the chain's just taken up a little bit of the slack. Once we actually start clearing stuff out of here and I've got room, um, I can lift that up and then we can take the base off the bottom of the cabinet there and I can lower the, the top of the mill down onto a pallet and then we can they can lift that into the truck, I guess. Uh, the wheels, I think the way I'm going to handle those is I'm pretty sure the movers will have big um, rolls of plastic. So I'm going to do them in pairs back to back like this so the spokes don't hit each other. And then just make sure, make absolutely certain they know not to put them flat and put anything on top of them. And I think they should be okay. Uh, things like... Dexter's door here uh, probably just looks like a rusty piece of sheet metal but um, this is actually really important because this is one of the only pieces of an original Brooklyn's that I actually have and this one is actually somewhat historical because it was off the car that won the first Grand Prix in New Zealand uh, called the Prosperity Grand Prix back in uh, I can't remember when after World War II um, and it was one of the first proper organized road races in New Zealand. So the reason I've got this is because this piece of sheet metal shows you everything about how the Brooklyn store is created. So it's got all the folds, um, all the places where the, the panels clinch round. You can see where the wooden frame was, where it's been pinned through how the cutouts for the hinges are all done, even details like these little, how the corners are folded over. Um, so there's a hell of a lot of information in this. So it's one reason why you wouldn't restore this. You'd, as soon as you tried to restore this by cutting this off and welding on new pieces on the bottom, you'd lose the shape. So at the moment, even though it's got holes all through it, it shows you exactly what the shape is. Um, so I'm going to try copying that, I think. Uh, the car does have a door on the passenger side as well, but I've got a funny feeling it's not as long, or they're, they're asymmetrical possibly. Uh, there were different bodies that were used on Brooklyn's, so there is, I don't know that there's one standard type. So this is definitely correct for the driver's side. Um, I'll have to I'll have to have a look through my documentation and see if I can remember how the, the other side works. So mill, as I say, is all unbolted. Uh, there's just so much stuff. The, the one thing I have done on the cars is I've had the uh, the shortened torque tube back. So this is one of the last jobs I can do before we move because after doing this, I'm going to take this out of the vise and unbolt the vise from the bench because that has to move as well. So the torque tube has been shortened 10 inches. Um, I measured that about 27 times to make sure I got that measurement right. And uh, so this has been, I'd, I'd removed this. Um, the engineer shortened it for me, made it a press fit back into the housing. You would have had to have machined it down to get it to, to fit. Uh, it's all held with Loctite and he also drilled and tapped it. These are actually high tensile uh, metric bolts um, or metric socket head cap head screws. Uh, button head, I guess they are. Um, I don't like using metric fasteners on things, but these aren't likely to come out. So... Um, they should be fine. They've been drilled and tapped into there, all locked tighter in. And I've actually gone through and filled in the heads with some epoxy. So once this is all painted black, these will look like the original rivets. The drive shaft was shortened as well. 
um, this is the differential end and you can see that's been turned down uh, I don't think it was turned down it's probably just been cleaned up uh, but new splines have been cut into that I haven't been able to test those because the um, the muff coupler which is the little collar that goes between here and a similar spline on the um, the pinion gear uh, is in a box somewhere and I'm not sure where I'm pretty sure it's that one but it's all wrapped up so I can't get to them but he will have copied the existing end so I'm sure that's all fine uh, and that's kind of the last thing I've done on the car and of course I can't even check if this is correct I did lie it down next to the side of the car and just kind of eyeballed it and it's it's pretty close so Obviously the length of this will directly affect where the rear axle sits because it's a solid linked unit all the way to the gearbox mount under there uh, where the ball joint is. So hopefully I've measured that all correctly and when I get settled into the new place I'll be able to um, set this up. So this car has been sitting on this sort of dolly thing uh, forever basically. And I'm going to leave it on there for now because it'll probably make it easier when we go to move it. Although I think they'll just lift the, the chassis off and, and store it on its side. Um, when I get set up in the new place, I'll probably set it up on axle stands because I'm getting very close to actually getting it onto its wheels. I still need to make the front spring hangers though. Um, I think that's the main thing that's going to hold me up with that. If I'm doing that, I should probably figure out what I want to do with the chassis in terms of painting it. Uh, although I suspect it's probably better to loosely assemble the whole car, make sure everything works, then take it all apart, paint it um, probably black. I'm not sure. And then uh, reassemble it all finally. The uh, other things I need to do on this, apart from the rear mounts, I think that's basically it to get it on its wheels. Um, obviously I have the whole engine and gearbox to assemble. I can do all that separately. I did, I was considering bolting the, the uh, engine block to the crane. But I think it's probably safer on this little, it's on a little wheeled dolly that I've had forever. Um, I think I made that dolly when I first did my MGB restoration and that's what I used to move the engine block off the MG around on. So I think that's kind of it. Uh, basically I've been wrapping stuff up in cardboard and bubble wrap, so little drawers like this just so things don't fly apart. That's the mounting kit for the, the mill. Um, I'll just keep going till I run out of the bubble wrap. It's Saturday today. The uh, packers and movers are going to be here at 9 o'clock on Monday morning. So the problem I've got now is I've run out of space to, to move things around. So on Monday, well Sunday night, I'm going to have to park the Austin and the MG outside and leave all the space clear for the movers because I also still need to go under the house and pull out everything that's under there um, and stack that up in here as well. And so that's piles more of these stackable boxes. I've got another set of rims for the Riley, but they're, they're actually much wider rims and I deliberately wanted to go with the narrower ones for the, the proper vintage look. Um, there's an old set of tires under there as well there's all sorts of stuff so that'll be tomorrow's job uh, the car will have to come in tonight because I think it's going to rain overnight so that's pretty much where we're at um, it was really nice of Brian the engineer to be able to he basically did a rush job on this for me because he knew I told him I was moving and it was going to get awkward if after I moved I'd have to come back and pick this up it's not too bad but it's just good to have this done out of the way and all ready to um, to stay with the car and move with the car which doesn't look much like a car anymore unfortunately but um, 
like I say, once I, I get to the new place, um, I'll have a lot more room. So I think this garage is, I have measured it, I think it's about six and a half meters wide by seven or eight, something like that, plus this little extra bit on the side. My new garage is 100 square meters, so uh, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's square or rectangular, I think it's rectangular. So we're actually going up to the property tomorrow to do the final inspection before we take ownership later in the week. Uh, so I'm definitely taking a tape measure and I'm going to measure things up. I know how long the cars are. Um, I think the Austin's a bit over three and a half meters long, the and about 1.3, 1.4 meters wide. The MG's a little bit longer, um, and the Riley, I can't remember how long that is. Uh, I did have a did have a picture of it up there, but that's now in a box. So what I'm hoping is in the new garage I can fit cars lengthways. So. Can sort of have one there and then another one here another car park there and then plenty of space around them to set up the tools and, and various bits and pieces um, i guess mill and drill and things like that will have to go around the walls i'm going to need to build shelving and racking and benches and and all sorts of things but it'll just be good to have more room for things like the english wheel where you you really want that out in the middle of a room with plenty of space around it for manipulating panels and things. So for example, when I need to do the door, obviously that's got compound curve in it. So I'll be wheeling a panel for that. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, the other thing I'm doing at the moment is anything potentially damageable. This is a, a sign from the White Lady Diner up in Auckland, very famous takeaway caravan thing. It's been there forever. Um, wrapping things like that in cardboard. So I'll probably do the same with the radiator. Uh, I bought a new air compressor, which is behind the Austin at the moment, which is basically the biggest one I could get that'll run on single phase power. And I've got the box from that, which I'm cutting up and I'm using that to wrap things up. Uh, just for a little bit of protection. So, poor little Austin will probably never get to drive around the peninsula. I do keep thinking, oh, I could go for a sneaky drive, but uh, I just don't have time. Actually, this radiator is probably worth taking a quick look at before I wrap it up. So, this is... The car that I'm copying had quite a long history in New Zealand being raced and crashed and rebuilt and uh, rebuilt with different engines and uh, it's a long complex story but the the car that was being restored at the time had this radiator on it which is kind of a, a homemade hack job uh, it's a cut down saloon radiator I believe and you can sort of see how it's all been put together. And this is, I think, a fake grill on the front. And then, lift this up. You can see, uh, maybe it's not fake on the front, but you can see how this is all kind of assembled. It's gonna need a lot of work. So obviously the, it's missing various tubes and it's all completely battered around and, and bashed about. Um, the You can see the radiator cap there with the hilariously off-center dog bone, which I'll keep, of course. Um, so this is going to be needing a lot of work to get it usable. Um, I have heard off, or I did have offered to me, sort of, a, an original Brooklyn's radiator, but it was 8,000 um, pounds, which is, yeah, that's too much, uh, too much for me anyway. So that's what, 16,000 New Zealand dollars for a, an original radiator. 
Um, an original one would be nice, of course, but it's it's a replica car. It's not going to increase the value of the car necessarily. Um, I I always wonder about could I make a radiator shell and put in a modern core, um, but I don't know that my metalworking skills are up to it. I mean, th theoretically, this gives me the, all the shapes and things like that, and I should be able to, um, you know, make something similar. I don't. I wouldn't be able to get the same finish because this will be made out of um, like some sort of nickel steel. I can't remember what it's called. Um, like German silver steel, is it? Uh, yeah, it's completely gone out of my head, but. I'm wondering if it would be possible to to make something out of steel and then paint it or, or aluminium and I don't know what would happen if you put a more modern sort of core inside there because the standard Riley Light 9 engines use thermosiphon cooling. Uh, the Brooklyn's actually has a water pump so it's got um, a, a pump there to circulate the water. And I don't have one of those. I could actually get one of those. They they do um, reproductions of those, which, like most things, aren't cheap. But uh, I don't know what would happen if you tried to to use a modern core, say an aluminium core, on a thermosiphon engine, if that will work or not. But that's something to think about. I'm, I'm miles away from needing this anyway. Um, I'm just going to make sure this is well protected now for the move, and then one day I'll figure out exactly exactly what I'm going to do with it. But I think this one is also slightly too tall. Um, I would need to see if I can get measurements of a real one to compare. 